Wow. Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to the 2012 Southwest Division Spring Contest. Now for those of you who may have gotten my email the last few days, the heading was free entertainment, free food, how can you beat that? And this is also one of two contests today. So if you're wondering what you were going to do, you can be here this morning eating and getting free entertainment, then driving over to Evanston and enjoying their contest. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our inspirational speaker this morning, Bill Morrell. Are we ready for a great contest? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's hear it for a great contest. Yeah. Right outside the door, it says, great decisions you decide. To have a great contest, we need to make great decisions. The first decision we made as an audience, we came here to listen. For all those who here are here ready to listen, give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. There was another decision we made, functionaries. Whether you're a timer, or a bell counter, a judge, or just a helper, you decided to use your leadership skills to encourage and inspire. You decided to make this a great decision. Give yourself a round of applause. And there's one last group, our speakers. Whether you're going to be coming up here and hearing a question, and thinking on your feet, and being a great table topic speaker, or you spent several days, weeks, and months coming up with an inspirational message to be an international speech speaker this morning. You too have made great decisions. Let's hear it for our contestants. So with that, we've had great decisions. We've had great decisions by our speech makers, great decisions by our functionaries, and great decisions by our audience to give great attention to a wonderful event. With that, we will have a great contest. Let's hear it for that. Make sure you turn off your cell phone or at least put it on mute or as you can tell somebody's working with their brain. Yeah. So that can be very uh, distracting. We don't want to have that happen today. Let's take a second to also recognize some of the dignitaries that are here. Hopefully the dignitaries that are in attendance today got a chance to sign up on the dignitary list today and one we've already noticed might not have so we're going to have to go through and, and chat with her. Uh, Donna Weston, why don't you stand up, our Southwest Division Governor. Thanks so much for asking me to come out today, I appreciate it. Our South Division Governor, Don Williams. Don, why don't you stand up? John Laid. Our speaker this morning already with our wonderful opening announcements, Bill, Bill Morell. Shara 
Gildersleeve, Arius 36 Governor. Seven. That would be Liz Martinez. There she is. and she just knocked my socks off as far as being a fantastic, energizing presence at the last uh, meeting that was just wonderful. <laughs> that seems to be all the sign-ins. We had one other person that seemed to give me a look that she's a dignitary that didn't sign in. Who are you? I'm sorry, Cynthia Leggett, Central North Division. <laughs> earlier, we're going to have two contests today, the Table Topic Contest and the International Speech Contest. The first contest will be the Table Topics Contest, and when that contest is concluded, we're going to have a short 10-minute break. After the break, obviously, we'll have the International Speech Contest. Contestants, time it, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant of arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of the contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster and International Rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestant's presentation, so we'll have those doors closed. You may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations, so try and be cognizant of that. So with that, let the contest begin. So if we could just have those doors closed, and I'll be, I'll be walking in during the room. <coughs> At this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the speaking order for the Table Topics contestants. The first speaker in the Table Topic contest will be Sarah Schiffer. The second will be John Harris. The third, Jill Morgan Fowler. The fourth, Jessica Huntington. And I see everybody's writing that down. I'm going to go through that just a little bit slower. Thank you. <laughs> Especially for the ballot, for the ballots for the judges. And if you'd like to write it down, I'm just to participate in the attending today. So Sarah Schiffer, Schiffer, S-C-H-I-F-F-E-R. Second, John Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S. Third, Jill Morgenthaler, M-O-R-G-E-N-T-H-A-L-E-R. The fourth speaker in the table topics will be Jessica Huntington, H-U-N-T-I-N-G-T-O-N. The fifth speaker, Tori, T-O-R-I, Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. The sixth speaker, Roger Nelson, N-E-L-S-O-N. <clears throat> and our final speaker in the table topics portion of our contest today, Joanne Hassler, H-A-S-S-L-E-R. Did all the judges get the names? Maybe enough time for that. Mr. Sergeant at Arms, Mrs. Sergeant at Arms, who is participating today as the Sergeant at Arms? Thank you. If you'll please escort the table topics contestants out of the room, except for our first contestant. So our first contestant will be Sarah. Sarah, if you want to join me up here. give Sarah a chance to compose herself here, and I'm going to go make sure that everything's over in the hallway for just a second. 
There's another reason for that, but I'll tell you in just one second. <laughs> She's got a good close up. Our timer is located where? Okay, so for Sarah and the audience, this is our one timer. Now we had the, the light. The light's not working currently. We're choosing to use it. Choosing to use the card. So for the contestants and also for more importantly for the participants that are in the room, guests that are in the room. At uh, one minute, you're going to put up the green, and you're going to hold it up the whole time. We had some questions about that in the hallway. And then you're going to put up the yellow at one and a half, and then the red at two, and make sure that the participant sees them. So if we could have one minute of silence for Sarah now. Table topic contestant number one, Sarah Schiffer. Sarah, your company has just given every employee one paid day for which you can volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? I'll give you the question. Your company has just given you one day, for every employee one paid day for you, for you to <coughs> volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Sarah. Paid time off to serve and do whatever I want. Serving is one of the most rewarding ways we can spend our time. I'm sure you'd all agree, right? Yeah. And there have been many organizations that I've participated with before, Circle K in college, Habitat for Humanity, and a lot of soup kitchens. But throughout my life, the service organization that I've been drawn to again and again, the nonprofit organization is Science and Spirituality. And their mission is to help people achieve inner peace through an outer peace through meditation. And I do volunteer there, usually not during paid time. I do accounting work there, and I do some cooking work and some speeches. I do a lot of workshops on the power of meditation to help us in all aspects of our lives. So I think I would just continue along that road, and if they were to give me a full day, I'm wondering if I could get the day off the night before and possibly fly to India, because they have a bunch of schools started called Darshan Academy, where I would love to go and do some teaching or do some work for those schools. There's about 16 schools, and the premise of the schools is to help children educate, be educated in their soul and in their mind and in their heart and in their body. So they have time for meditation and religious studies as well as helping with all different areas and the students have started to do very well in all different disciplines. So the reason for me that this is so important is that I've found in my life, when I was in high school and I got into this a little bit more, it helped me 
It helped me with my studies. It helped me with my relationships. It helped me to be calm after college when I didn't know what I was doing with my life. It helped me feel like there's a stillness and a rock inside of me that isn't going to be affected by whatever ups and downs of life that I go through. And for me, that's been the greatest gift in my life is meditation and stillness. So in whatever way I can participate to help others have that gift, that's what I'd like to do. I hope we all find stillness and joy inside of ourselves. Mr. Joseph. Our second contestant in the Table Topics com competition is John Harris. John, I'm going to read your question. Your company has just given you and every employee one day, one paid day for which you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Our second contestant, John Harris. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests, I've had the fortunate experience of doing volunteer work for several different organizations. I once worked for a company where we actually did have a half day where we would do projects usually somewhere in St. Charles along the Fox River, which I found to be very rewarding. But the most rewarding volunteer experience I've had, and the one I would choose, would be to be a volunteer for PADS. PADS is a short for Public Access to Deliver Shelter. PADS is an organization which provides meals and shelter a dinner, shelter, and then breakfast for the homeless. The purpose of PADS is not necessarily to permanently furnish for the homeless, as PADS encourages the homeless to become self-sufficient. PADS has facilities where the homeless can go and use the computer and receive mail and receive training for jobs. The intention is to make the homeless self-sufficient to eventually get them out of the situation of being homeless. But I found it very rewarding to at least give these people a hope, give these people a place they can go, even if it only is overnight. It's an opportunity to show these people that somebody does really care for them, that they are valuable, they are worthwhile, they do have something to contribute to society. And I find this very rewarding. And so for that reason, I would choose paths. And I would encourage, encourage anybody who has a little bit of free time that they can give, even if it's only one evening a month, to consider becoming a PADS volunteer. I found this very rewarding, and I'm sure if anybody else has the desire, has the interest, you would as well. Mr. Toasting.
was the inspiration for my taping. Table topic contestant number three, Jill Morgenthaler. Jill, question twice. Your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Table top topic contestant number three, Jill Morgenthaler. Hello, Toastmasters honored guests and friends. I've been very fortunate. It has been a difficult year economically. So instead of giving money to an organization, I have been giving my talents that I have honed here through Toastmasters. And the organization that I have reached out to and helped is the Boys and Girls Club of Elgin. The city of Elgin decided to cut their monies to the Boys and Girls Club, $11,000 the club was going to close down. These are young children, um, middle school, high school students, some with disabilities, some just plain poor. So luckily there were a group of really warm, loving, inspired people who asked me if I would do a keynote and help them raise money. And what I was able to do was actually take my leadership skills and some of my war stories, some of you don't know me, I'm a soldier, and talk about my lessons of one of the most important lessons in leadership is you leave no one behind. And when I was in the army, I was a woman, they didn't want me there, and they kept trying to leave me behind. But the true leaders were the ones who saw in me a gift and held on and took me forward. And so that is the story that I shared with the men and women who came out in a blizzard to help these children. We didn't raise $11,000, we raised $30,000. And I am so proud to be part of taking our young men and women forward. Let us leave no one behind. Mr. Toastmaster. Mr. Timer, may we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their belt. Table topic contestant number four, Jessica Huntington. Jessica, your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? I'll read it again. Your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? <coughs> Contestant number four, Jessica Huntington. That was a very good question. What organization would I choose to volunteer at? For me, is a simple answer. An animal shelter, the ASPCA, veterinary hospital, something in that field. It's a passion of mine to care for animals and help animals and spread the word on how important it is for people to take care of them, to get them the medical attention they need, to help those animals that are abused and neglected and abandoned. Reach out to them, socialize them, 
get them able to trust humans again and find that right family for them so that they can live on their life the way that they were meant to live in happiness and in a warm and comfortable loving home that will give them the things that they need. It breaks my heart when I see things on TV or even in my neighborhood, people chasing after the geese that are out there or just seeing what things happen to these poor innocent creatures that did nothing but love and accept you for who you are. And for me, it means the world when I can take that animal, show them love, and turn them around and give them to somebody else who can do the same thing. I've spent several years where I fostered kittens that were sick and neglected and got them healthy. And it was the hardest thing to say goodbye to them, but at the same time, it meant the world to me that I found them a great home that they're gonna live out the rest of their lives in. So if I had the opportunity to have a paid day to go and volunteer, it would definitely be for an animal shelter or a rescue organization or something of that sort because it means so much to me. Thank you. Mr. Tanya, may we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their bells. Our fifth contestant, Tori Libby. Tori, your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Our fifth contestant, Tori Libby. <laughs> if given a day off, I would turn right around and walk right back in the classroom because that's where I volunteer. I actually speak to teens about healthy relationships. Now, that could sound kind of daunting, but then when you add on top of that, that I specifically talk to teens about sex, dating, and relationships, that could make a lot of people nervous. And yet, what thing would a teen rather talk about than sex and dating and relationships? <laughs> I'm very popular when I walk in the classroom. In fact, the kids get very excited when they know that their regular teacher is going to be sitting aside and they're going to get to hear from me for an entire week. So I walk in the classroom and I set them at ease right away and I tell them that my point of being there is not to tell them what to think and to do. They've already got mom age people doing that already. Instead, it's to get them thinking about their choices in these teen years. So that's how I handle the intro with the teens. Then I get to spend the week getting them involved. We put them in groups. We have them work through some issues themselves. We do some fun skit type things and activities. Mostly, I give them the respect that they deserve. Mostly, I talk to middle school students. And I enjoy them so much. I see their faces on me. And I also know that a lot of them are already dealing with the heartache of broken relationships. And some of them even with the consequences of becoming sexually active at a young age. I give them hope. 
I give them new opportunities to change the path that they're on, some of them, and I make it all fun. So if given a day off, my choice would be to walk right in the classroom again, get up at 7 in the morning, be there at 8 o'clock, sometimes go through an entire five classes in a row. Yes, it's exhausting, but I feel like I'm making a difference in the lives of teens, and I love them. Thank you. Mr. Timer, may we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots? Table topic contestant number six, Roger Nelson. Roger, your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Our sixth contestant, Roger Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. If I had the opportunity to have a day off where I could help any charity, any charity at all, I think the charity I would choose would be the Red Cross. Now, the Red Cross does a lot of very good work. It's a very reputable charity. So I'm not worried about, am I really doing any good? And it would give me an opportunity to use skills that I can perhaps best bring to an organization. An organization such as the Red Cross is involved in disaster relief and also some social programs. <coughs> and that gives me the opportunity to use organizational skills because that's one of the things, something as large as the Red Cross needs. They need people with organizational skills. And I believe that is one of my strengths. So with organizational skills, I can help them <coughs> determine where the needs are, determine how to best apply the, the charity, the, the what I'm looking for here, the efforts that the organization needs to apply. So I think the Red Cross is an excellent organization. Now there are other things I can do. For only a day I could help a food kitchen. I could help with other things. And of course you can always donate to charity. Donating to a charity is a wonderful thing to do. In fact, if you are going to donate to a charity, make sure it's a good charity. Check them on the Better Business Bureau and there are other websites that can verify this is a good charity. So, by all means, if you get that opportunity, take it. In fact, you could even ask your employer, can I have this opportunity? Will you give me this opportunity? That's something to think about. But as I said, I think the charity I would most like, best fit in with would be the Red Cross because I can apply my skills to their efforts. Mr. Hosea. Mr. Timer, may we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots?
table topic contestant number seven, Joanne Hassler. Joanne, your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Your company has just given every employee one paid day for you to volunteer your time at a nonprofit organization. What organization will you choose and why? Our final contestant, Joanne Hassler. Masters and our guests. I wouldn't have any problem at all deciding where to give my one paid day. However, I'm a realtor, so the odds of me getting a paid day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any unpaid days, but uh, that would be a real thing to have a paid day, actually. And in this market, I'd go for it. <laughs> but the paid day would be given to Mutual Ground in Aurora. It is an uh, it is a place for women and children who have been abused. It is a place that they can go and find a shelter in the storm. It's a place where they can feel safe and protected. If I were to give that one day to them, I would use some of my Toastmaster skills. I would ask them what they needed from me in terms of being empowered and in terms of being recognized for the gifts that they have and what it is that they can give society. I can remember a time in my life when I had to call 911 and say I too have been abused. When the police had to come to my house to <coughs> make sure that all was well. It would be my privilege and pleasure to support women and children who needed shelter. Mr. Toastmaster. If everyone could please remain silent while the judges complete the ballot, selected <coughs> by the ballot counter. <coughs> Dallas judges can hold those up so the chief judge can know that you're done. Any other judges with completed ballots, please hold those up. Judge and the ballot counters can make their exit.
other judges working on the ballots. So please raise your hand or let us know that you're working on your ballots. All done? Chief Judge, you have all the ballots? a little easier to separate the bottom part. <laughs> I, seem to remember, I seem to remember the same thing happening last year. Now you probably wondered why I left the room a few minutes ago before the contest started, but a remarkable recovery, which, when you agree. Oh, yeah. The scene was barely <laughs> John handed me this question, and I'm sure you all wondered what that question was. And I go, I can't read this question because they all thought about it last night. The question was, if you won the lottery, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question is that? They're not supposed to know what they're about. You know, that guy looks like he wants to come in. Do you want to come in? No, I just want to see what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> We had to change the question. We had to go with this other question. The back of the question. Look at how it's spelled. How do I spend six hundred forty million dollars? Nobody won that. No, they did. Nobody in this group won. Somebody won. Three winners: Illinois, Kansas, and Baltimore. Kansas, really? Yeah. I'm on a project team in Kansas. <laughs> All right, don't make me hit you with this gavel. You don't want to be messing with the hammer. All right, I'm being good, Bruce. Bad Bruce can be very terse. I know one person, unfortunately, that did not win the lottery today. And it's my pleasure to introduce Jerry Evans, who's going to. It's not my pleasure that he didn't win. It's my pleasure to introduce him because he's going to give us some exciting details. It says so right here, exciting details. <laughs> about the upcoming District 30 contest. So please welcome, also a non-winner, <laughs> A non-winner. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Tell them about being all besides winners. Being, besides being at a division contest, what's going on on April 20th and April 21st? District, district conference. How many of you have never been to a district conference? Okay, we have a few people that will want to attend the district conference. Well, let me give you a short synopsis of the district conference. One of the most significant things about this conference. I love my fellow Toastmasters. One of the district conference, April 20th and 25th. <laughs> One of the most significant things about this conference is Michael Nataro, who's our international president, will be visiting the district. It's the first time in about six years that we've had an international presidential visit. We had an opportunity at the international convention last year to meet Michael Nataro, and he's a wonderful gentleman. He's also, I think, very supportive of District 30. We'll have an opportunity to interact with Michael Nataro. For those of you We'll have the opportunity, actually, with our district governor to have your picture taken with Srinivas, as he says, and also with Michael Nataro. I'm not sure how excited you are about that part of it, but he's visiting the district. He's also going to have an opportunity to go around to some of the different clubs and work with Srinivas for a couple of days, and so you never know that he might visit one of your clubs. As we know, two contests are taking place today, of course, Table Topics and the International Speech Contest. Table Topics happens on Friday night. Michael will be keynote speaker Friday night, so you won't want to miss that. And on Saturday, we have a full agenda. Saturday morning, how many are uh, accomplishing or achieving an educational award? Okay, so as you know, accomplishing educational awards, you'll be recognized at the Achievers Breakfast, which takes place at 7 o'clock Saturday morning, bright and early. Michael also will be speaking at the Achievers Breakfast. And then we transition from that to the Banner Parade, which we know is a great bunch of fun. For those of you who want to have an opportunity to kind of let everybody know about your club and your specific personality and the flavor that you offer to folks, Banner Parade is a place to do that. We go from the Banner Parade then to the business meeting, which we all look forward to electing new district officers. So we never know what's going to happen with that. That will be exciting. 
And then we have a bunch of different educational sessions. They're all posted on the District 30 website. It's Crown Plaza Hotel in Rosemont, so it's centrally located for everyone, either by <coughs> car and or public transportation for you to attend. And then in the afternoon, we have concurrent educational sessions. Again, you can look on the District 30 website. We have a bunch of great presenters for that. So I would encourage all of you to attend as many of those as possible. And then it culminates on Saturday at 4 o'clock, just so all of you international speech contestants know, the contest starts at, five at 4 o'clock and it will conclude at 5.30, so that will be prior to the dinner program this year. So we keep changing the times around to kind of figure out what works best. And then 6 o'clock is the dinner program. Michael Notaro will be our keynote speaker on the Saturday program, or Saturday evening program. And I think that just about covers everything, so I encourage each and every one of you to register for the conference. Early bird registration, uh, you have to register for your clubs by April the 6th, so it's $129, <coughs> so it's certainly a savings for the club. And then after that, the rate goes up accordingly. So the earlier you register, the better off it is for your club and the more people that attend, which I encourage each and every one of you to invite someone to the conference, especially those folks that haven't had an opportunity to experience a conference. Because I think all of us who've attended a conference, it really can be a life-changing experience. And for me, one of the most important things is you get an opportunity to network with a lot of different Toastmasters, meet a lot of new friends that you probably wouldn't ordinarily get to meet by staying in your own club. I had a chance to meet Jill Morgenthaler at different events mm -hmm. and a bunch of other folks, and I always look forward to the conference, and it's great to, uh, to see my fellow Toastmasters. So April 20th and 21st, Crown Plaza Hotel, Rosemont, Illinois, Mr. Toastmaster. That's the way to give the notes in between a little break. <laughs> I can't read your list. Can I have 30 seconds? Can you have 30 seconds? Yes. Sure. Okay. Real quick, I just want to make <laughs> real fast. Well, then I'm going to play with this. <laughs> <laughs> After conference on my YouTube account, if you Google the name T I M M Y B O L G E R, my name, you'll be able to see them up at the conference. There's about 50 items of stuff up there now. Thank you very much for letting me know. Thank you. That's the way to run the middle of the break. We had one of these in a smaller group setting where the person that I asked to come up and do the 10 minute or the little intermission, thought that she was just supposed to stay up here until somebody came in and announced the results. So she was just going to go the whole time. And then she thanked me when I finally come up there and came up there and said, you know, that's it. We're just going to go to something else. So that was much better. Jerry covered everything we needed. That was wonderful, Donna. And that was so impromptu. Nobody's again, we're going to cut all that out. It'll look great on <laughs> It says here that we're supposed to tell you where the refreshments, water fountains, restrooms, et cetera, are located. Uh, the refreshments appear to be in the back, and the water fountains, restrooms, and everything else, I know they're outside of this room. So <laughs> you have until um, just about 10 minutes to 10.45. About 10.45 promptly, we'll come back in and meet you. Make your phone calls and then turn the phone back off. And